This story is about a guy who is now sitting chained to a chair and gagged in his mouth. An unknown man asks him if he wants to go back to square one, hinting that he wants to chop off his fingers. After the masked man has done his thing, he starts reading out the biography of the guy who is bleeding sitting on the chair. The young man's name is Kim Sojin, he is 20 years old, comes from a country called Korea, which is on Earth. The bio also stated that he loves to play games, hates desserts flavored matches. Sojin sitting on a chair was clearly puzzled by all this, but no sooner had he said something than suddenly an axe came flying towards his face. The warden approached Sojin and asked him if he was deaf, saying that the young man needed a hearing aid. And since he needed one, the warden decided to give it to him. But what he did was horrible, he just put holes in his head, cutting off the young man's ears. I hope I never become hard of hearing, because I don't need a hearing aid like that. In any case, the warden was glad that the young man could now hear him well, and so he asked Sojin again, and his answer should only be yes. The man asked about the second princess of Natanya, saying that the man who had killed her was our protagonist. That's when Sojin wondered when things went wrong? And what happened to his normal life? His name was Sojin, he was 20 years old, he was a college student who liked to play games, and at the moment he was playing his favorite game. By the way if you look at the game, you can see that it is the game Apex Legends. Sojin had just entered college like all college students. Leaving for college, his mom asked her son not to go to Cyber Cafe today. Sojin says okay, but we all know he's going there. As soon as Sojin opened the door, he found himself in a completely different place. He saw a group of people in front of him, led by a girl with white hair and pointed ears, she looked like an elf. Sojin was surprised at what he saw, but he was even more surprised that the door behind him had vaporized. Soon three more people appeared around him. As it turned out, four warriors had been summoned into this world. It was a high school student, a child, a grandfather. And also our Kim Sojin, a college student. Everyone, including Sojung, couldn't understand what was going on, and our young man was even shaken by it all. But as it turned out, he was only excited because he thought that he was now the main hero of this world. In that case, he was sure that he could now learn sword fighting, be a sage and a necromancer. Oh no, not a necromancer. Anyway, Sojin was willing to go through all of this, and then he would be the best. Suddenly, Sojin shouted the word status, hoping to open a status window, and the people standing around didn't understand what he was doing. But in the end, no status window appeared. The girl with white hair explained that they didn't have such a thing as a status window, but they did have a skill. She decided to greet the warriors by introducing herself as the second princess of this world, Natanya. She smiled, and happily, looked forward to their work together. But first, Natanya wanted to test the skills of the new arrivals. The first in line was Sojin. The girl asked him to spread his arms to the side and freeze slightly. Looking at her staff, the girl was surprised, and so was Sojunu. Natanya was shocked, or maybe it was confusion, but she said that Sojin had the accumulation skill. After saying that, her subordinates' heads were blasted with blue lightning in the same second. Turning around, she asked them to stop, but her body was pierced by the unknown person's hand. All of this happened in front of the new arrivals, and especially Sojung. The unknown man pulled his hand out of the princess body and she slumped to the ground, holding onto the hole in her body. Looking at Sojin, she tried to say something to him. But the unknown man thrust his finger forward and then a blue beam pierced Natanya's body, leaving only the lower part of her body. Everything was drenched in blood, and Sojin stood in fear, not knowing what he should do now. He looked at the unknown entity, and it immediately approached him. The entity put its hand forward and began to bring it closer to Sojin's face until it completely covered his face. When Sojin finally regained consciousness, among those who had survived, including him and the other warriors, only Sojin was covered in blood. At this moment, a restraining collar was around the young man's neck. The overseer laughingly explained that it was useless to use his magic powers as they were now inoperative. Looking to the side, Sojin realized that this was a state prison called Gehenna. The bald man asked if he was Kim Sojin. The man grinned, because going straight into a prison that was built by the powerful and 7,000 meters above the ground. Gehenna for his first crime was the worst thing that could happen. Finished with Sojung, he went to the others, asking them to raise their heads. The young man was not happy, for this was not how it was supposed to go. He thought about the fact that normal students in these worlds were living happily ever after. So shouldn't this life be brighter and easier than what he was going through? And so, standing handcuffed and with a magical collar, Sojin thought about what his life would be like now. He couldn't believe that he would be imprisoned for the rest of his life, until his death. A short while later, the prisoners lined up in a row in front of the warden. 
She greeted the prisoners, calling them assholes, also asking them to call her warden. As she looked at the prisoners, she bluntly stated that she felt like throwing up when she looked at them. She was surprised, because looking at this garbage, she noticed that none of them repented or regretted their sins. The overseer stated that this is what they are. Calling them a cancer on society. Anyway, she asked them to open their eyes and face reality. The warden mentioned some personalities, for example, a high school student ruining everything around with his powers, or the general of the demon army, a crazy vampire looking for revenge. All of them, none of them could escape from this prison. And among the prisoners gathered here, none of them could escape either. And at that very moment, she looked at Sojin and the young man noticed the warden's gaze, but he didn't understand why she was looking at him specifically. She moved closer to him, calling him the crazy warrior she was interested in. At that moment, there was despair on Sojung's face because she had chosen him. As she left, the warden asked them not to cross her path or she might even kill someone. As the warden was leaving, one of the prisoners said something and she noticed it. She asked for an answer. And everyone shouted yes. But the blue-skinned man said something about a fucking break. And in the same second, the warden's foot was already on the place where the blue-skinned man was standing, thus crushing him, leaving only blue liquid. As it turned out, the girl had forgotten to tell something. The reason she was chosen to be the warden was because of her power. She explained to the prisoners that if they lived quietly in Gehenna, everything would be fine. Maybe? Looking at them with a cold stare, she wondered if anyone wanted to die just like that? With everything done with, the warden decided to start with the confessions made by the prisoners for their crimes. And the first one was the warrior Kim Sojin. We return to the moment when the masked man cut off Sojin's ear and then asked the young man if he was the one who killed Princess Natanya. But no matter how hard the executioner tried to torture Sojin, the young man did not want to admit his guilt. The warden was sure that hallucinations worked, but something had gone wrong. In that case, she speculated that perhaps it was because of his willpower. No matter how many times the young man was tortured, Sojin would not admit his guilt, repeating words of innocence time after time. At the last moment when Sojin shouted that he was not guilty, a blue lightning bolt suddenly appeared that released him from the ball of hallucination, which also startled the executioner and the warden. Falling to his knees, Sojin couldn't understand what had just happened. Looking at his fingers, he was pleased to see that they industry back. In addition, his ears were also perfectly fine. The warden explained that it was a skill called hallucination, which was what Sojin had been tortured with. But still, she couldn't believe that the young man had freed himself so easily. She assumed that Sojung had an unusual skill, and then asserted that Sojung had the accumulation ability. In that case, the masked man thought that it wasn't just because of that ability. The masked man assumed that it was only because they had weakened the magic impairment since they needed the hallucinations to affect his brain. At the time, Sojin couldn't believe that he was being tortured by hallucinations, and on top of that, they started doing it from day one. He called them crazy, asking if people didn't have rights in this world. The girl looked away at the same moment and began to tell the story that in the past, there was a race with two horns here. They all lived in a small village. It was an ordinary village with a population of 300 people. A very quiet village. But one day, a man came from the land, he was a warrior. A warrior who had traveled through the world. The girl told of that day, 275 inhabitants died. That warrior's skill was called God Mode. It allowed him to use commands like cheats in games. But at one point, the girl just ripped off his limbs and left only his head. The girl asked Sojin if he knew what was the last thing that guy said? Exit. That's what that guy said. The girl expressed her belief that all earthlings treat their world like a toy. Because of that, their world was now chaos. The girl thought that all earthlings can kill people and treat it so easily. And when they raped, they justified it by saying they just wanted to get closer. The warden asked Sojin if his heart was broken when he killed the second princess. But Sojin kept saying that he didn't kill her and that the whole thing was nothing more than a false accusation. Sojin wondered what he would get out of killing her? That's why, he doesn't understand why it happened to him. In that case, the girl decided to hit the young man since he didn't understand anything yet. She decided to explain something important to Sojung. The most important rule of Gehenna is that the accused admits his crime. Looking at Sojin with an exasperated look, she explained that it didn't matter to her whether Sojin was guilty or not, it wasn't her job to uncover the truth. After all, Gehenna is a correctional facility. The warden further explained that she didn't care if he was guilty or not, as it was her job to correct and teach him. She welcomed warrior Kim Sojung to their world before punching him and then sent him into a knockout. Soon Sojin woke up in his cell. Sojin didn't know what to think or do, because his life was not going to be easy, and this world was no different from the earth. 
The only difference from this world is that in his home world, at least he had family. But here, no family, no friends. All that's left is loneliness. At that moment Sojin raised his head in tears and saw the second princess Natanya looking at him with a piercing gaze. Sojin didn't understand, how did this happen? But Natanya only smiled and asked the young man. Does Sojin wish to be freed from this place? My, dear warrior. Sojin didn't understand what was going on here, was it really just an illusion? It didn't feel like an illusion, though, as everything looked real. The young man reached out to Natanya and wondered if she was alive. After all, he was sure the princess was dead after what he had seen. Though Sojin didn't understand how it could have happened or how the princess could be here, Sojin was very happy to see her, that she was still alive. The young man grabbed her shoulders, realizing that now he would definitely be free of the false accusation. Then he asked Princess Natanya to let him out of here. Natanya, sighing heavily, regretfully explained to Sojin that she was unable to prove his innocence. Sojin questioned her in surprise as to what all this meant. Why? A red lightning bolt appeared, and the princess explained that there were several reasons. At that moment, the girl glowed with a bright red light and fire horns appeared on her head. This blinded the young man a bit, but then he saw a very different Natanya, who summarized why she couldn't help Sojin. She's dead. Sojin couldn't understand how that was even possible. In that case, Natanya told about the so-called etheric form. Where the soul is the core and the body is the mana. Ordinary people are not able to see her, unless that person is from the earth. Plus she has enough mana to use her scales. The princess then asked Sojin and asked about the most important thing, if Sojin remembered the face of the real culprit. Sojin thought about it and tried to remember the face of the culprit, but unfortunately he doesn't remember it. Thinking back to the remaining three summoned warriors, he knows that they don't remember anything either. It's as if some of the memories have been cut out like a piece of paper. In that case, Natanya affirmatively let the young man know that not only had they infiltrated the nation's most important building and killed the princess, but they had also escaped, blaming Sojin for everything. Therefore, Natanya refused to publicly announce that she was alive. Since they have no information about the real culprit. Sighing heavily, Sojin asked with a sullen face, what should he do then? He grudgingly spoke up about how he couldn't do anything like that. But the princess asked him if he wanted to escape. Nervous, Sojin explained that he would eventually be executed. And he was just risking his life. Unable to contain his emotions, Sojin expressed to Natanya that he was called into this world against his will and then imprisoned where he was tortured. The young man was tired of this idle chatter and asked the princess to tell him the truth. He asked if he had any chance of getting out of here. Natanya took Sojin's hand off his shoulder and replied that she could not say that there was no way out, but that there was. Sojin's world seemed to turn upside down at that moment, for he had hope of getting out of this place. But the princess only said that there was a way out, a way out of a prison at 7,000 meters, from which not even a man with the ability to shrink could get out. After a while, Sojin was again sitting on the torture chair, where the executioner asked the young man to repeat what he had just said. He removed the blindfold from his mouth so that he could speak. Soon, through gritted teeth and tears in his eyes, Sojin confessed that he had killed Princess Natanya and her court mages. At that moment, Sojin felt terrible, because after two days of endless torture by hallucinations, he had to confess to a murder he did not commit. The prison staff finally heard the confession from Sojin, and one of them can finally go back to his past job. The remaining masked man, explained that the man behind him would tell them what Sojung had in store for him next. He introduced the girl, whose name was Amber, she was from the patrol team. Sojin asked what kind of patrol group? Amber greeted the young man, expressing her joy that she had met the one who killed the princess. She even laughed at him, for Sojin looks much stupider than she had heard. Soon she took off the young man's handcuffs, thinking he was uncomfortable with them. And it was clear from Sojin's look that he was relieved. She was glad to meet him, also expressing that Sojin was glad to meet her. The executioner asked Amber not to chat with the prisoner and to send him to his assigned location as soon as possible. Sojin looked down and saw that his hands were cuffed again, and then Amber simply grabbed the young man by his clothes and dragged him along. Sojin wondered what was going on here. The girl was surprised that the young man had not been told yet. But she stunned Sojin by telling him that he was finished. She explained that the most important thing in Gehenna is the criminal's confession of his crime. Those who come here are scum, first and foremost. So I don't see why you have to resist and torture yourself. Sojin wondered, so if he'd said yes right away, none of this would have happened? And Amber confirmed the guess, since the torture would have stopped right away, since everyone else was doing it. In the same second, the girl's look changed. 
She explained that once the perpetrator confessed, there was no taking back his words. And that scared Sojung somewhat, but Amber asked him to forget about it. Since it wouldn't be good if the trash started falling out of the basket. Soon the girl asked to talk about something less depressing. She repeated that she was Amber from the patrol group. She explained that the patrol group consisted of prison guards with the highest combat skills, which were comparable to cheetahs. She told Sojin that she was in charge of the section where he would be sitting. But she warned him that if Sojin threw a tantrum, she would kill him immediately. Soon they came to a door where armed guards stood. Stepping over the threshold of the door, Amber wanted to show him something scary, judging by Sojin's look. It was a place where there was a large cluster of capsules where people were placed. This was exactly what the execution in Gehenna was like. Sojin wondered if these people were being used as batteries? And Amber confirmed the hunch, calling it extraction. They drain their mana and extract skills from their bodies, from their shells. Humans are the most important resource here. The prisoners of Gehenna have special skills, that's reason enough to imprison them here. Amber also heard from the captain that Sojin has a special skill, so you could say she's saying all this to him out of the goodness of her heart. A little earlier, Natanya had asked Sojin what he planned to do? The young man asked about another way, does it exist? In that case, the princess explained that the death sentence cannot be avoided, besides, since Sojin is already off the land, he can't hire a lawyer either. And escaping from prison was simply impossible. And Sojin himself understood that. Looking at the desperate young man, Natanya decided to tell him a story to motivate him. She told him that from the moment Sojin set foot on this earth, time had stopped in his world. Which immediately shocked the young man. The princess went on to explain that, for example, a month had passed since Sojin had come to this world. So in earth time, a month has also passed. If a month had already passed in earth time, wouldn't Sojung's parents look for him? This news made the young man angry, so he grabbed Natanya and angrily told her that she was the one who had called him here. In that case, Natanya asked, what was Sojin going to do? Just sit here and do nothing? And then asserted that the warrior already knew the answers. She gave him a choice, either surrender and rot in prison, or escape and return to earth. She expressed confidence if Sojin decided to escape, she could help him do so. Sojin grits his teeth and lets the princess go and agrees to her help. But lastly he says that he doesn't trust her one bit, but if he can escape from this world, he doesn't care. And the princess was pleased with this wise decision.